All right, it looks like we lost that signal there. We talked about them being dangerously close to that kind of a rotation. Uh, we'll find out if that indeed impacted their live shot. Meantime, we're also watching the live coverage of our affiliate KOCO. Uh, they've been talking about the tornadic activity right there in Oklahoma and uh, all that's taking place. You see their live images right there. Let's listen in to what they have to say. They appear to be, they appear to be spinning very, very fast. Yeah, absolutely there. And uh, you're probably going to see more debris coming up through. As a lot of us know, as you go east of I-35, the amount of tree density begins to increase. So you're probably going to start seeing trees get kicked up there. And uh, again, you can see right along, it uh, looks like there's going to be a creek there known as Deep Fork that is going to be just north of Route 66, North Luther Road, uh, and right around Peebly Road there. All right, so these are the cities that we're talking about. We're talking about uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, Arcadia, and Luther, uh, Oklahoma, all in the paths of this uh, activity where we've seen these ominous clouds. They've gone from uh, dark gray to near black, and then a formation of twisters, as you see right there, uh, that kicking up of dust. That's a tornado likely on the ground. You can see power lines that are snapping there. Let's take a look and a listen to what's taking place. Man, look at all that power flashes. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna hit it. Here, man, look, it, it's fixing to hit this house. The house is. Look at the house. Holy cow. Man, it, it's coming up on a handful of houses right here. Man, I'm fixing to have to break free. Stay on it, I got a break. Hey, Mike, yeah, we're having to break free. I'm about half a mile from it. It's moving pretty quick. I'm on, uh, I'm on Oak Park Road and uh, just south of like uh, the Stillwater Central, the, uh, the train tracks right there. Uh, we're just coming up on uh, Arrowhead Road and County Road 3310. And uh, we've already saw this thing take out two or three houses, a ton of power flashes, and uh, it's moving pretty quick. I'm almost into the town of Wellston. Wellston is right off my nose. If you're in Wellston, you need to be in your tornado area uh, already. This thing is going to track right almost towards town. Uh, and it's definitely a lot of energy. I'm going to spin the helicopter again. And We'll hold right here and kind of give us a better shot. But uh, it's on the ground, and it's about, uh, let me get around here, it's about a mile and a half, a mile and three quarters uh, right to the west of me. And I'm trying to zoom out on my map here. I don't have the county road. But it looks like it's going to track about one mile north of Wellston. Uh, but it's on the ground. As you can see, the funnel cloud, and the or the wall cloud, is actually lowered. You got a big wide funnel right there, and this thing is just grinding up the ground as it, tra as it uh, transitions to the east, Mike. There it is. And uh, it, it looks like it looks like it's actually growing maybe a little bit. If I get this dead gum skid out of the way, we can zoom in there. Uh, we have the, the lowering right there, and it almost appears it almost appears that it might be kind of roping out a little bit at this time. Uh, I'm going to have to break free and kind of get a little bit to the east uh, as it continues to move on us. But if you're in Wellston, you need to be in your tornado shelter, tornado safe area, because this is coming right towards town. It's probably about uh, three miles, three and a half miles to the west of it now, and uh, it's directly eastbound, Mike. You think it is?
All right, if you're just now joining us, this is an extraordinary moment. We're looking at at least one twister that has formed there and is touching the ground. This in Wellston, Oklahoma. This after we've been watching for the last 30 minutes or so, live activity. And thanks to our affiliate and this chopper shot, KFOR, we've seen uh, tornadoes, at least one tornado touch down uh, in each of the cities of Edmond, in Arcadia, in Luther, and now in Wellston, Oklahoma. And an extraordinary sight, not only were we seeing the flashing from power lines that were being hit but according to this uh, chopper reporter he counted about two to three houses that were simply decimated by this tornado and again now you're seeing a more defined view of this funnel cloud and you see the sparks there power lines and it hitting anything in its path this is a monster of a storm system uh, we've been hearing from Jennifer Delgado earlier who said millions of people will be affected by this storm system because it is spanning from Texas all the way to Minnesota uh, over the next uh, set of hours up until at least 11 p.m. tonight and possibly overnight. The folks in nearby uh, Kansas are warning residents there to expect a lot more severe weather even into Monday. But right now, again, extraordinary live images of a monster of a tornado, it appears, a touching ground there in Wellston, Oklahoma. We've been listening to the incredible reporting there from the chopper uh, reporter there as well as the anchors and reporters in other locations in this Oklahoma area. Let's listen in to what they're saying now. Just to the north of it, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't push it with this thing. It's already torn up two or three houses. Uh, I'm directly over the town of Wellston right now, and it looks like it's gonna be about a mile and a half just north of me. So if you're in the town of Wellston, I think you're gonna be clear, but unless this thing just really continues to grind and turn more to the southeasterly direction, but, uh, the, uh, this thing is, uh, it's definitely increasing. It is tearing up everything in its path. And there's sporadic homes out here uh, on acreage. So if you, if you live like, I don't know, two miles north of Wellston, uh, along that easterly west track, you're definitely gonna wanna be in a tornado shelter here. This tornado is probably a half a mile wide right now. It's continuing to grow. Uh, you can see the feeder band lowering right on the left side of the screen. We've got very, very intense lightning right behind me, and uh, this is just becoming a grinder here, and as it continues to come straight to the east. God, dude, that thing is freaking huge. That is a monster of a tornado that you're looking at live right now, touching ground. And you heard from that chopper reporter. His chopper is only about a half mile, by his estimation, away from that twister, which, in his words, is tearing up everything. You saw power lines being snapped. He counted two to three houses that were simply decimated. And as we've been watching these funnel clouds form and touch ground, this one by far, just within the past... 35, 40 minutes now is uh, by far the widest, the largest. He says, by his estimation, the reporter in the chopper there, that this is about a half mile wide, uh, this tornado. Uh, let's listen in to what he's saying right now. It's pretty much north of Wellston, but uh, it's headed almost directly from Chandler. Uh, if you took a, a, a map or a dot, you know, put a line on Chandler and went straight 270 or straight west, that's right about where this storm is. I'm over County Road 33, 40, and like 890, which doesn't tell you much, but uh, we're northeast of Wellston shooting this storm, and uh, this tornado is continuing to grow, and uh, there's sporadic homes out here on acreage that uh, are, are in the path. And like you said earlier, if you're in a bathroom, if you're, uh, you know, in a closet, that you need to get underground because this storm is growing and I mean, it is just ripping everything up in its side, Mike. I'm going to descend to get a better perspective here. I mean, several... Pa
Yeah, I'm going to be uh, just northeast of uh, Wellston. So if you're just now joining us, again, you're looking at live tornadic activity right now in Oklahoma. This is Wellston, Oklahoma, our affiliate KFOR, bringing us extraordinary live images right here from their chopper, which the chopper reporter says they're only about a half mile away from this chopper as he is also uh, dancing around to make sure that he is out of harm's way. But it's a very wide storm, a wide funnel cloud, by his estimation, about a half mile wide. And while we've been on the air, taking this live shot we have seen the sparks flying from power lines that have been wiped down and we also saw a field of debris two houses maybe even three perhaps even more according to this reporter have been simply wiped out uh, an extraordinary scene here in uh, really what is kind of the dinner hour on Sunday there in Oklahoma but the threat isn't over all in that area are being asked to really take cover go to the basements, go to their tornado safe places. This is Tornado Alley. They're used to dealing with things like this. However, this is a monster of a storm. It's been a quiet May, which is usually peak month for this kind of tornadic activity. And here we are, you know, mid toward the end of the month. And we're seeing now that it, things are starting to pick up on Frederica Whitfield. Uh, we'll have much more of our storm coverage here from the newsroom. Don Lemon joining me now. Don, this is an extraordinary image uh, that we're seeing a real confluence of events here that continues to threaten millions of people and Fred, throughout the evening. And Fred, it's been amazing to watch you and to watch the live pictures and to see a tornado actually on the ground yeah. hitting homes uh, as we're speaking, live coverage of, our, of this tornado activity right now on CNN. Mm -hmm. Frederica, thank you very much. It's been a very interesting evening and it's going to get more interesting. This is serious, folks. This is serious now. We have been telling you since Thursday or Friday that there would be tornado activity happening this weekend and that there would be severe weather. And now here it is. Many people facing the brunt of it right now in Oklahoma. And if you were not watching CNN, you missed it. And we'll probably see more of this, unfortunately, for the people in that area uh, as we proceed throughout the evening here. We saw a tornado touching down hitting several homes. A helicopter pilot saying, to his estimation, that this tornado that he saw, the one that you're looking at right now, look at that, about a half mile long, and he said tearing up everything in its path. Uh, it hit uh, Wellston, Oklahoma. There was also uh, tornadoes in other parts of Oklahoma. And this system is a humongous system from Minnesota to Texas. And anyone in any of those areas should be on the lookout right now. Look at this thing. This is unprecedented that we get to see uh, something like this. And you could see the lightning. And as, it, as this tornado went through and started hitting homes, you could see the sparks from electricity and just from debris uh, on the ground there. Uh, we have reporters who are in the area who are trying to make their way. We also have affiliate coverage from our affiliate KFOR, these live chopper pictures that you're looking at now. Again, fascinating to see this. Very scary for the people who are facing this, who have to uh, be in, in, in its path. And as we have been telling you, our Frederica Whitfield, our Jennifer Delgado, that as they both have been telling you, you need to get to a place of safety if you are in this particular area. CNN's Jennifer Delgado, our meteorologist, has been following this. Jennifer, this is unprecedented to see. This is a huge system that we have been warning people about, and now it has come to fruition. That's absolutely right. You know, and we see these tornadoes popping up, these big supercells uh, in parts of Oklahoma as well as Kansas all the time, especially in the month of May as well as into April. Now, month of uh, May has been fairly quiet. Typically, we see about 325 tornadoes for the month, and right now we're running well below average. Now, what you're looking at right now, now, this is our radar, and we zoom into the area. Here's Oklahoma City giving you an idea. And then this is the area we're talking about. I think this is Fallis, where we do have the tornado warning in place until 515. Now, what we're going to see is the storm. It's moving to the east at roughly about 30 miles per hour. And as it does, we're expecting it in Kearney at 515. Now, earlier, we were talking about how Luther could be potentially under the gun. Now, we look at Luther. You can see the storm had taken more of a northerly track. As we go throughout the 
evening. We're not going to be done with this storm just yet. By 540, Kendrick, as well as into Avery. Now, when we see these tornadoes coming through and these supercells, of course, in Oklahoma, they are very prepared for this. You want to make sure you have a storm shelter. You want to make sure that you have a basement. If you don't have that basement, get into the interior part. Don, we talk about this all the time. And we've seen the video of the clouds uh, lower. We see these tornadoes developing. We've seen some of them even in the last hour being rain wrapped. It's really hard to see. But what we do know now is that this tornado warning actually looks like it's been extended. I think just a second ago I said 515. Now it's going to go into 530 Central Time. And we're talking potentially about 1,600 people being at risk of uh, danger of potentially uh, losing their lives or seeing their homes like with this tornado that we're looking at coming out of KF4 out of uh, Edmond and out of Oklahoma City. We've seen these power lines, the popping, uh, these uh, tornadoes getting wider. We've had reports of uh, the half mile and it's not just Oklahoma. We, have, we saw these big tornadoes as well through parts of Kansas not far away from Wichita uh, where we know that the uh, National Weather Service office, the, the employees there had to take cover, take shelter because Jennifer? it was just too dangerous. Yeah. Hey Jennifer, can you, this is, this tornado apparently hit Wellston, is in the Wellston area. Can you show us where Wellston is in, in in Oklahoma. Um, in Oklahoma. Well, if you take look over at our graphic here, this is Wellston, this is Fallis. Uh, this is where we're seeing the uh, the signature right now, uh, just to the north of Fallis. Now, we tighten back up a bit more for you so we can zoom back in. I think you asked to see Wellston. And as we show you where Wellston is, the worst of the weather has uh, basically been to the north of that, but we still have that tornado warning in place, and we have actually several tornado warnings in place. We're looking at two. Now, keep in mind, we still do have some as well in Kansas, but these are Doppler indicated. But the ones that we're seeing out of Oklahoma, these are confirmed tornadoes. We're confirming them right now, Don, as we're watching them on TV as they're developing. We see uh, mm -hmm. these helicopter pi pilots out and there. And you want to make sure, as I said earlier, that you're in a basement, you're somewhere in the center hallway. Yes. Uh, in a place that's away from windows. Yeah, you want to be away from windows. You want to make sure you're protecting your head. And, you know, when we saw all those tornadoes coming through Alabama, you remember two years ago, and so many people were uh, saying that they would see less injuries if they had helmets out there, something to protect their heads. This is something else you can do. If you get into that bathtub, pull that mattress over so that can provide some extra protection for you as well. Okay, uh, so Jennifer. Yes, Don. Edmund. Mm -hmm. Wellston, Arcadia. Yeah, let's try Luther. this one more time for you. Um, hopefully our producers back there can pull that up for you. Again, this is Luther. And some of these areas may not have, uh, may not be very popular. There may be some open areas. But what we're seeing right now from 519 to 538, this potential, this supercell moving through Kearney as well as into Parkland as well as into Kendrick. Now, let's hop over to some more uh, weather signs. This is going to kind of bore you, but what we're looking at on the far right corner of your screen and the bottom left, these are uh, what we're looking at is base velocity. And the one we're looking at, storm relative velocity, here is our TVS. That's our tornado vortex signature. And there is our inflow right there. So those are the areas that we're really concerned about. And then, of course, you can kind of see it here. You can better see uh, the development of that storm as well. But again, there's Luther, there's Wellston, Kearney. Yes, you want to be on the lookout as well. And then, of course, Meridian, you're getting hit with some heavy rainfall. We also okay. have reports of uh, hail being one and a half inches. All right. Jennifer, stand by. I'm going to need your help with this. But we want to, I want to tell our, our viewers, you are watching this unfold as we are. We're watching this with you, and we're learning new information with you. We're going to rely a lot on our affiliates now. As a matter of fact, we want to go to our affiliate, KOCO, and listen into their coverage for just a moment. We'll be back. part of the county there, so we're probably starting to pick up on trees, on the reflectivity there. But nonetheless, this is a, a, a huge tornado, and the amount of damage that it will do will be substantial. This will kill animals, farm animals. This is a very dangerous storm system that is moving through right now. Uh, so, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, I know this is going to certainly do a lot of damage. Humans, animals, farm equipment out there is going to get picked up again. So uh, we need to certainly watch this storm very closely. Again, this is a, a tornado warning that uh, is very serious. All right. There's a very serious tornado warning right here. And anyone in the path of this, if you are not below ground, will certainly uh, uh, certainly do quite a bit of damage. Rusty, what do you have? Uh, Damon, I, I have to agree with you. The bottom line is if you're not below ground, you are risking your life 
with this tornado. That's how serious this is. This is a high-end tornado, long track tornado. It's headed right towards Kearney. It's uh, just northeast of Fallis, west of, uh, of uh, Farm Road, north 3320. And then the one to the east of that is north 3330. Uh, and then just headed into the southwest sides of Kearney. I'll do a storm track from the center of circulation. I'm going to put it out going about 30 miles an hour. If that's a little fast, that's fantastic uh, because uh, we want to give folks uh, a big heads up for this. So let me track this out at about 30 miles an hour here. And uh, I'm going to have to zoom out just to give you guys the times of arrival. But you're looking at Kearney uh, right, right around, I'm going to say even around 515. So let's say Kearney at 515, Tryon at 530, and possibly Agra at around 545. But Damon, right now there, there's really no stopping this. One other thing, Steve Crono and I just looked uh, with a dual pole product. We are picking up a debris signature yeah. with this tornado. So, I mean, it's been on the ground long enough. It's gone through enough populated areas where there's no doubt uh, damage uh, is, is, is imminent with this storm. Absolutely. I'm not surprised one bit that we are depicting debris out of this. I mean, as we mentioned, trees, farm equipment. Uh, it's a very hilly area, so we are likely going to pick up all sorts of things, and I can certainly see that right now within the radar. Also want to just touch base on uh, not only this storm, but also any more storms that happen to develop, which we are beginning to see now, more storms develop. Just and we're going to get back with our affiliate I'll coverage in just a moment. Metric. That's live affiliate coverage from our senior affiliate KOCO in Oklahoma. I want to get now to our chief meteorologist here. Mr. Chad Myers joins us on the phone. Chad, this is a huge supercell, uh, and it has been whipping its way across Oklahoma. And you saw the live pictures on the air described by the chopper pilot as a half mile wide. Right. You also heard that local meteorologist from KOCO, in fact, my old affiliate when I worked in Oklahoma, uh, he talked about a debris field. He talked about being that the Doppler radar is actually seeing things other than raindrops and hail in the cloud, seeing trees, seeing limbs, seeing uh, any parts of, of homes and shingles that the radar just says, hey, wait, this is not a regular raindrop. This is much larger. This is now what we call debris. It can be insulation. It can be anything now up in the cloud. This storm has been on the ground for a very long time time. It is a stovepipe large tornado. If you are in Kearney, Kearney, this is northeast of Wellston, and, and Don Wellston did not take a direct hit. It was a few miles north of the city. And let me tell you, when you live in Oklahoma, a few miles makes a tremendous difference because even Kearney, about 10 streets north to south, maybe six streets east to west, so less than a square mile. If the tornado misses by a mile, you've missed the entire town. And so just a little bit makes such a difference when you're now in rural Oklahoma. There are two other cells that you see developing, one under the word Oklahoma City and one south of there. That would be very close to Norman. I'm seeing the potential for both of these to rotate. Now, if they do begin to rotate and they do put tornadoes down, that will be in a much more populated area. The chopper pilot is not in position to take a look at those cells, but I'm watching them right here on Doppler radar, and I will continue to watch them for you, and I'll keep you advised. Hey, Chad, if you were looking if it just, just before 6 o'clock here Eastern time on our air when we saw that tornado ripping through a neighborhood there, you saw the power lines being pulled up. You saw the sparks. Uh, describe to us what's going on in, in, in that situation. Well, that was very close to the town of Tallis, which is still northeast of Oklahoma City. This current storm that you're seeing there with the word Kearney and all those circulations, that is still to the northeast of Oklahoma City and not moving back to the city, moving into the rural areas between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So all of a sudden you see this tornado, and even away from the stovepipe, the, the vortex itself, power lines flashing, greens, blues, sometimes yellows and oranges. Those are the power lines just being ripped off the poles, and then you see the big flashes when the transformers are going as well. It's hard to see this tornado right now. There's a lot of rain wrapping around it. It was a much easier picture to see the tornado on the ground. Trust me, Don, there's a tornado inside that circulation right there. You just can't see it because of the rain that's kind of coming all the way around that storm right now. People in Oklahoma, you need to pay attention. I know you always do. The NOAA weather radio is the safest and most reliable thing you can also do. You can buy an app for your phone. It even knows where you are. These apps are GPS certified, and they know, oh, my gosh, you're in that new polygon. You're in that these big, the big square, that big purple square. And even if you're driving down I-44, you may not know what county you're in, but the phone, your phone knows where you are, and it knows whether you're in that tornado warning and in danger or not. Chad, you know, 
Oklahoma very well, large city centers, uh, Tulsa. Tell us how far we are from that, those particular towns, uh, those particular cities being hit, Oklahoma City. Well, I think to, to start to warn Tulsa would be certainly a stretch. You're 70, 80 miles, even at 30 or 40 miles per hour, this is hours away. Typically, storms won't last that long. They will cycle. They will kill themselves with what's called occluding. They'll come around so hard that they'll cut off their own circulation and it will die. But another storm, maybe to the south, a tail end Charlie, as we call it, the next storm to the southwest will develop. And then you'll all of a sudden, somewhere after dark, these storms will all line up. They will all connect to each other, and the tornado potential will go down significantly. But right now, there are three big red circles. One, two, three. Those are circulating supercells. They are not attached to each other. So any one of those cells could rotate and put a tornado down. We know the northern one right now still has a tornado on the ground. Chad Myers, can you can you uh, stand by in, in just a moment here? Because, uh, and I'm going to get back to you, I promise. I want to go to Jason McLaughlin. He is a storm chaser uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jason, what are you seeing right now? Do we have Jason? Jason, are you there? Yes, I am. Jason, Don Lemon yes, here sir. at CNN. What are you saying? Let me get this window up so we can hear each other a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, as we talk to Jason, again, this is unfolding, uh, and you're watching it happen just as we are, and we understand in weather situations there can be a, uh, issues with uh, technical issues and hearing people and getting pictures up. I'm going to go back to Jason now. Jason, uh, a storm chaser, what are you seeing and what are you hearing there? I have now skewed it. I'm just south of the circulation. I can no longer see it. it. It's still on the ground. I'm trying to reposition, but there was just a roughly a half mile wide tornado that had touched down. And it stayed on the ground for as long as I could see it, which was around 10 to 15 minutes. And it was very near the community of Kearney right now. I'm back south of it trying to get back in position. But when the first tornado touched down, it touched down near Edmond, and, and there was home damage that was occurring uh, right underneath it. And it, there, there was just a lot of debris up in the air. And now, as you're repositioning, how far away do you think you are from it? And how, far, how close were you to it when it was happening? I was close. I was um, with, within a mile of the half-mile-wide tornado whenever it was just to my north. I'd say right now I'm probably a good six to seven miles south, southeast of it, um, just trying to get back through the road network so I can get back in position to warn the people as it continues to move eastward um, towards the Tulsa area later on. All right, Jason, be safe and stand by. So I'm going to go to Chad Myers now. Chad, we can see a little more clearly now uh, this picture. Look at the size of this thing now. As it yeah, it's a little bit difficult, Don. I cannot see roads on the ground to know how large that tornado is. But clearly now, if you zoom into it, it looks a lot larger. What you'll notice, I'm seeing little pieces of debris in the sky rotating around the tornado. So we know it is still certainly in contact with the ground. If you are in the town of Kearney or anywhere near to the northeast of Kearney, you need to be taking every precaution you can. Put on helmets, your, your motorcycle helmet. Get underneath anything strong, underneath the stairwells. Most homes there are on slabs. They don't have basements. They just don't. I, I, it's so very difficult to build a basement. You literally need to use dynamite. So most of these places are just on a slab concrete. Get as low as you can in that slab in the middle of your home. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Yeah. An outside wall, an inside wall, maybe a closet wall. That makes three. Those are fantastic ways to stay safe. And when you notice a tornado-damaged home, there may be only one or two walls standing. You want to be inside one of those or two walls. Now, you see here on this picture here from KOCO, the circulation is still on the ground, but not that stove pipe, not the wedge on the ground. So, but I would still say, Don, you're talking winds here in excess of 130, 140 miles per hour, as the meteorologist points out, that little yeah. piece of debris still flying in the sky. Chad, stand by, because if I was at home just watching this, I might be a little bit confused of why the, the uh, words are not going with the, with the person on the screen. It should say voice of Chad Myers, our meteorologist on there. Chad's talking. This is a meteorologist from KOCO uh, in Oklahoma, and he is on the air reporting live. And the big thing, the swirling thing that he's doing, that, that is a tornado that has touched down. Uh, near Wellston uh, there in, 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 uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, and this, it, this is just east now, it's just getting new positions, just east now of Kearney in Oklahoma. Chad Myers, continue. 
That's right. And we also are going to see this storm continue to cycle on and off. So even though you may not see a tornado on the ground now, that doesn't mean there's not circulation in contact with the ground proper. There just may not be the funnel all the way to the ground. The funnel is really just debris um, that is picked up by the tornado itself, whether it's dust, wheat, uh, any kind of grasses or shingles. That's what you begin to see as it touches the ground. This is cycling on and off, up and down, and this is going to continue for quite some time. I just want to know Oklahoma City is in no danger at this point from this storm. But there are more storms back out to the southwest of this storm, back towards some of these more populated areas that we still have to worry about, Don. All right, Chad Myers, I want you to stand by. Um, I want to tell our viewers that we have you covered. We have got Chad Myers, our meteorologist. Uh, he's here in Atlanta. We also have our affiliates there, a number of, of affiliates. And you see one on the air reporting live from KOCO. They've got you covered as well. They've got our backs, and we've got yours. We're watching for you. And our meteorologist here in-house is Jennifer Delgado with new information now on this, on the path of this, uh, these tornadoes in this system. What do you have for us, Jennifer? Hey, Don. You know, I want to update everybody. We do know that this tornado warning that we're watching and we're looking at in parts of Oklahoma, this is going to last until 5.30. We're talking central time. Now, since the last hour, a lot of these have changed over from the tornado warnings now to thunderstorm warnings. This is some new development. As Chad just said, for Oklahoma City, yes, you can start to relax a bit because we're looking at severe thunderstorms right now, but no warning uh, indicating tornadoes, so that's good. But the area that we're watching to the north of west of Chandler, that is still an area that we're looking at with the tornado warning. We're seeing those tornado signatures still spinning around there, so that threat is going to continue, but we are starting to see some weakening on the radar as we track this for you. It's going to be into Avery right around 549, still in the 6 o'clock hour, and as Chad mentioned to you as well, we are going to see this lining up, and we're going to start to see some of that threat diminishing as we go into the late evening and the overnight hours. We hope so. We hope it diminishes, it but you never know, and we will continue to watch it. Meteorologist Jennifer Delgado or meteorologist Chad Myers also joining us here, we have storm chasers out. We heard from Jason McLaughlin in the area earlier and our affiliates that are there on the ground. Uh, if any of our viewers are in danger, we're on the air for you, so make sure you stay tuned much, much more uh, on this supercell that it's making, a way across, making its way across a big part of our country right now. There are, those are the live pictures. And we saw a huge tornado touching down just moments ago, live here on CNN. We'll also have this. Some are saying that this past week was one of the worst of President Obama's term. He, has he lost support of Americans in the process? And meantime, he and the First Lady speaking to college graduates this week both had some rather blunt words for tomorrow's leaders. What's the message behind the messages we're discussing? That'd be Pretty very appropriate. Beautiful. And you can feel yeah, it. Like right? it so you can use ink for all your business purchases. Are at the wedding. I like it. So you can capture your receipts and manage them online with Jot, the latest app from Ink. So you can spend less time doing paperwork and more time doing paperwork. That is easy. Ink from Chase. So you can. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars, and let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars. In other words, I classic is back. Love the all new Chevrolet Impala. Chevrolet, find new roads. You When you wear dentures, you may not know it, but your mouth is under attack. Food particles infiltrate and bacteria proliferate. Protect your mouth with fix -It -It. The adhesive helps create a food seal defense for a clean mouth and kills bacteria for fresh breath. fix -It -It and forget it. Are you feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office? Maybe it's finally time you tried a neat desk. The revolutionary neat desk organizer instantly reads business cards, receipts, and documents. With neat desk, virtually any piece of paper can be scanned and then automatically organized with just the touch of a button. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your contact list and then sync right into your smartphone. 
and any document you can scan or send directly to Neat from your computer becomes easily searchable with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can try the Neat Desk or our amazing portable scanner for 30 days absolutely free. We'll even pay for the return postage if you decide to send it back. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day free trial and start getting organized today. Okay, I cannot tell you how serious this is. And you have to listen to us. Because if you are anywhere in the Oklahoma area, anywhere in Oklahoma, I don't care where you are, I want you to pay attention because you are potentially in imminent danger right now from a supercell of tornadoes. As a matter of fact, there is a new tornado warning out now. Our meteorologist Jennifer Delgado with the latest for you. That's right, Don. Now, we just talked about this over the last uh, maybe five minutes ago. Now we're seeing here is Norman, Oklahoma. We do have a new tornado warning in place. Now, keep in mind, this area is highly populated. This is uh, more than 100,000 people here. Now, what we're going to continue to see is this tornado warning being in place until 545. There is our rotation. There is the area that's under the tornado warning. You can see for yourself that includes Norman as well as into Moore as well as into Newcastle. Now, we've seen numerous uh, tornadoes tornado warnings popping up throughout the evening. We'll continue to see that as we go through the next couple of hours. But the problem is when these storms go through, and this one right here is moving at roughly about 35 miles per hour, these are potentially dangerous, of course. They cause widespread destruction. We've seen video coming in out of Oklahoma from KFOR as well as into Cocoa, and we've seen some of the damage that's been happening of these very large wedge tornadoes just rain wrapped. As we track this for you, I want to point out to you for 534, now keep in mind this storm that that's producing this tornado that was indicated on radar uh, could be in Norman by 534. Hall Park as well as 548 as well as into Franklin. Now as I said to you that tornado warning in place until I think 550 local time. Now as we uh, advance a little bit more for you and we've been talking and following things just on the radar uh, roughly about how it's rotating and in the direction and as we zoom in a bit more for you and if you remember Chad talked about this earlier how we said we're going to see these cells going through the evening hours and then as we get later Later into the evening into the morning we're going to start to see a line and then we're going to start to see that tornado threat starting to uh, diminish but as I put this into motion for you and we start this off by 5 a.m. and as we go through the morning we're still talking about a severe weather threat as we go through tomorrow as well as even into Tuesday anywhere you're seeing in red this is the area from Texas all the way up towards Minnesota these are areas right now that are now dealing with Tornado watches. These are going to last until 11 o'clock, and that's why I said to you, once we get late into the evening as well as into the overnight, we start to see the storms losing their punch. That's when we'll start to see things improving, but it's going to be a long time before we start to get this whole system out of here. Done. And until everybody is out of danger, yeah, we, will we want to make sure you're to protecting follow, yourself. You're to right. follow this. So Jennifer, stand by. We're all over the situation hap happening in, in Oklahoma. A huge storm cell, a huge cell of, of, of winds and, Large and winds, rain tornado. and hail and tornadoes uh, making its way across the country. Our Jennifer Delgado all over at CNN as well. Uh, new pictures, I'm just being told by producers, we're getting new pictures in, but stand by. Be patient, we'll get them back. There we go. Uh, there, these are new pictures of damage. Jennifer, yeah. And we saw the, you know, the video earlier of, of some of the power lines popping, and we saw that debris, and we talked about this earlier, how we can see some of that debris when it shows up on radar. And this is proof right here that uh, these storms move through, and they potentially could cause the same type of damage through parts of Norman, Oklahoma, that we just saw that video coming in. I'm not exactly sure where that was out of, uh, Don. Maybe you might have some more information on when we saw the video of the damage of the homes. But uh, this is a reality that happens through uh, Tornado Alley, and we saw scenes and a uh, report reports like this earlier coming out of Kansas as well. This is going to continue. Yeah. I, would, I would venture a guess. I don't know exactly where it is, but I would venture a guess it's where we saw that tornado Oklahoma touching City. down earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see this is from our affiliate KFOR. This is near, near Kearney, um, and this is what happens. Just listen, just as a matter of 30 to 40 minutes ago. Yeah, absolutely. This place was completely intact, and people were going about their, their lives. Their day. They're going and, about their day. And all of a sudden, here you go. This is what happens to your property when tornado when a tornado comes through. It doesn't get any more real than this. Look at the tops of those trees, sheared off. The roofs of Snapped. those homes, completely gone. And what's left of their belongings, it may be their belongings or their neighbors, it could be from miles away, stuck in trees, stuck on power lines. And we saw people walking in this area, just to the left of that just a moment ago, 
And Jennifer stand by, Chad Myers. It's sad to see this happening, but again, these are people's lives, and this is what's left of what they own. Absolutely. Yeah, Chad what Myers. you're seeing is you're seeing damage created by an EF3 or an EF4 tornado, Don. An EF2 will take the shingles off the house, maybe a couple of the 4 by 8 sheets of plywood from the roof as well. But this roof truss completely gone. So this is a, we're talking 140 to 170 mile per hour storm at this point in time, tearing these trees apart as well. Just taking the tops of the trees and spinning them completely off. And I, I venture to guess that this is, of course, the storm that we talked about going through Kearney and then Talus uh, and back toward the southwest from there is where it came from. It is still moving to the northeast. It is still moving toward Agra. And if you're in the Agra area, this is going to be a very difficult storm to see. I do not want you out there looking for the storm. It is wrapped in rain, as we Second call it. You will chat. not be able to uh, see the tornado as well. I just Sorry, want to Don. stop you. I've just got uh, guidance from the producers. They're, we're hearing from our affiliates that this is Wellston. But that's what we're hearing well, from the North affiliate. North Wilson, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead, Chad. Sorry about that. Uh, this was the same. This is the same parent cell. And you now you talked about this tornado system we had in Texas on on uh, on Wednesday, and they said, "Wow, there were 16 tornadoes. That's that's pretty amazing." Really, Don, there was probably only four storms kind of skipping tornadoes up and down. So maybe four storms, four tornadoes per storm, but four parent storms. The parent storm, the parent supercell here is the same one that did, of course, I believe did damage um, onward toward Kearney and onward now toward Agra. And it will continue toward the northeast, although wrapped in rain. I do want us to pay attention a little bit more to the storm to the south and more in Newcastle and into, uh, into Norman, because this is now where more people are actually located. Many more families, many more more homes. It is not an EF3-4 tornado right now going through that area, but it is just still developing, still getting stronger, and you should go to Jennifer with that. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer has been talking about the path of this, and Jennifer, we have been saying that uh, it's going to weaken over time, but it's certainly not the end of this. And listen, this is what, these people aren't even going to wake up tomorrow to see already sun is, a, the sun is about to go down, and now they're standing out looking uh, at their property or their neighbor's property or whatever it is. And it, uh, this is just heartbreaking to see. Absolutely. You know, we're looking at that video, people walking around surveying what's left of their homes there. You know, Don, we talk about this all the time. If you have a basement, yes, you want to get to the basement. You don't want to be near the windows. Of course, when those storms come through, they blow out the glass. You can, of course, suffer more uh, injuries when you're not um, in an interior part of your home. And again, we're looking at video coming in, and you're also uh, seeing those roofs ripped off. And as Chad just said, you know, he is an expert at this. He says uh, it looks like potentially an EF3, much like what we just saw coming out of uh, areas just to the south of Dallas just uh, late last week when we had EF3 as well as EF4. Now keep in mind when you go up to EF4, you're talking about winds 200 miles per hour. Now as we go back over and as Chad said to you, we want to talk a bit more about the storm again. Tornado hey, hey, warning. Jennifer, yeah. I, I want to stay on these pictures as okay. long as we can before we talk about the path. And, and so let's talk about again, uh, according to our affiliates, this is Wellston. Wellston, uh -huh. and, and look at this. Look at the trees you saw. If you want to know what, your, what it looks like in your attic <laughs> that you just saw. Right. Uh, with, the, with the air conditioning and the cooling vents um, just completely exposed there. And this, this is Trees what happened down. as this thing just really ran roughshod uh, over this neighborhood. People already there uh, with backhoes trying to clean up uh -huh. some of this mess off of the streets. This structure, whatever it is, who knows, it could be new construction, I'm not sure. Whatever it is, is completely flattened. And you can see now the insulation uh, from the homes, and this is these are matchsticks from structures that once stood no more than 40 minutes or an hour ago. And it looks like he's trying to clear the road, uh, possibly or probably for people to get back into their neighborhoods and for emergency workers uh, to to come in. But you can see what happens with a tornado as it comes through, and you guys know more about this. It can skip over a neighbor's home or the house next door to yours, and they will have zero damage. And your house will be completely demolished, Jennifer. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's right. When you see these storms picking up and tracking, uh, picking up, they can skip over homes. Now, what we're seeing in that video of the damage there, of course, we're seeing widespread trees down. And a lot of times you can almost see uh, the direction when you see those trees down that the storm came through. Now you're looking at video there. We want to take you over. We do know that this is confirmed tornado. As we come back over to our graphic, we're looking at Don, and if hopefully you can see this. We're looking at two areas to yeah. the right of your screen and to the bottom left. This is our velocity. And what 
what we can see, there it is. There is our tornado. This is Norman. Now keep in mind, now red, that's when you're uh, looking at the different directions. Red away, green toward. This is an area of indication that shows us where we have rotation uh, on the ground. Now, as we go back over to our graphic here, and as you said, we want to track about how the storm is going to potentially affect more people in the direction of it. And you're looking at um, some of the meteorologists there in Oklahoma, and they're just really just kind of pinpointing all that damage there. Now, keep in mind, we're still not out of the threat. Yeah, this is going to last until 545. Now, keep in mind, the storm is moving to the east at roughly about 30 miles per hour, much slower than the last one we saw near the Oklahoma City area, but 110,000 people are in danger of this storm. And then Norman, as Chad just said, he's very familiar with the area. These are very highly populated areas right up and down Interstate 35. So we're still looking at the threat of this storm as we go through hey, the Jennifer, next couple minutes. Uh -huh. I want to listen in to, to Absolutely. Coco KOCO because the video. they know that area better than we do. Let's listen in for a Our moment, guys. HD showed uh, there's part of a roof that's just completely gone. Looks like that's more of a, of a business with aluminum uh, on the siding there. But uh, uh, you know, that home was completely destroyed. I'm going to say this. This tornado is still significant. It is still uh, a tornado warning on it. And this thing is headed towards the Cushing and Drum Ride areas uh, of Payne County uh, and then on the western sides of Creek County. So, I mean, you look at that damage, Damon, just a tremendous tornado. Real quickly on the Norman tornado, I have not seen that circulation tighten up as uh, very tightly, but this is now crossing I-35. Mm -hmm. You see the stream on the right-hand side right now. Going to have to keep a real close eye downtown Norman, including the University of Oklahoma. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, you can see the damage on the right. This is the damage that came in from Lincoln County there. That was a tornado that went through Kearney. Unbelievable. And then we're really focusing our attention right now on what's going on right now in Norman. And looking at the right-hand side there, you can see that's Jimmy Taylor, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Stream right there. And that looks like he's certainly having what appears to be a, a wall cloud that is coming down here. If we can go full Jimmy shot and put this on the right-hand side here, because I want to focus on what's moving into Norman. And that appears to be a wall cloud that is beginning to, uh, beginning to develop up here so we are getting uh uh, we are continuing to see this rotation moving right over I-35 here. It looks like we're probably going to see a uh, little mini areas of uh, circulation here, but it looks like uh, right now the main okay, circulation Okay, we saw that damage. That I damage was in Kearney. We saw the, the damage from Wilson earlier. The damage you just saw on your screen uh, now is from Kearney, and it looks like it was hit severely, severely hit by this tornado that touched down there. Uh, Chad Myers on the other side of the break will survey the damage and find out where this system is headed to next with Chad Myers and Jennifer, Jennifer Delgado. We're back in a it moment. Is, it's just west of the uh, I-35.